Well, hello everybody. Welcome once again to the Van Buren Variety Show. I am Bob Van Buren as your host for this one hour show. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate it very much. Uh, thank you all to my regulars who tune in week after week. That means a lot. Thank you so much. And I want to say a special shout out to the new people that have tuned in. Uh, not just the ones that are tuning in now live, but the ones that will be watching this days, weeks, months, maybe even years from now. And so if this is your first time to be here, it's just what the title says. Where is it? Yeah, Van Buren. Van Buren Variety. It is a variety show. Week after week, I have an individual guest to have an interesting topic. Could be their profession. It might be a, a how-to segment. Might be just something that they're interested in. Maybe they're doing some really research on a certain topic or some entertainment, music, authors. So hence the name Variety. So if you like Variety and week after week you want to see a different topic, a different guest, this is the uh, channel to do it. And if you look real carefully, you might see that subscribe button. That would really, really help. And if you like tonight's guest, uh, let her know it. You can do that by hitting that like button on this video. Uh, and if you have questions uh, for the author, if you're watching this live, and if you're watching this days, weeks, months later, let me know. Just send a comment in there, and I'll make sure she gets it. I hope you've all had a great week better than I have. I got a little bad news today at the doctor. I've been feeling pretty, pretty, pretty bad lately. Well, lucky me. I have an uh, upper GI infection. Yeah, yeah, you can imagine. So... Yeah, medicine, all that. They took a blood sample today, so yeah, lucky me. And they, it, uh, that really stinks. You can imagine the, uh, the symptoms with that. But hey, we'll get through the show. So I just, if you can't say some prayers for me, that's really, it really is horrible. So I've never had that before. So, oh uh, well, well, uh, prayers work. So uh, and medicine does too. So uh, thanks a lot. So hopefully you, you've, you've had a lot better health than I have this week. So, well, enough of that. Uh, I've got a great, great guest tonight and an equally interesting topic. And not just one topic. We've got two topics from the same guest. Not only is she a talented musician, she's also written a couple of wonderful, interesting books. And you get both double treats tonight. You get to talk about the books and you'll get to hear the music as well. So without further ado, I'll be quiet and bring on my guest tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Nancy Carey Johnson. Nancy, welcome to the Van Buren Variety Show. Thank you, Bob, so much for having me. I'm so, I was going to say, how are you? But I thought, not as good as you might be. <laughs> yeah, they say, I looked at the internet, it takes about a week to get over that with the antibiotics. So, yeah. It's, it's not like Lyme disease and, or something like that. No, uh -uh. so I'm having to watch. I'm, having to have, I'm drinking water like there's no, no end. You know, they say keep hydrated. And... Uh, uh, watch what to eat. You have to kind of. I need to be on a diet anyway. This might be a good. This might be godsend. I need to lose some weight anyway, but hopefully not this way. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? Find the blessing in whatever happens to you. Right. Exactly. Well, let's, uh, I just told my uh, audience, Nancy, that you are not only an author, but you are also a musician. I am. I that am. is great. So does that? I bet that keeps you busy, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, yeah, I am. Uh, uh, I'm also the mother of four boys. I have three dogs, oh, wow. four cats. I don't know how I have four cats. I went from zero to four, uh, and a flock of chickens. I'm a homesteader, so it's pretty busy life. My, it's almost like the Beverly Hillbilly sounds like, isn't it? Or the Brady Bunch. <laughs> yeah, but you know the difference. It's like the Brady Bunch and almost everybody else in the world. What's that? Like, Carol had help. She had Alice. Her house was always clean. The kids never fought. I'm like, yeah, right. And who's like? You don't have an Alice the maid there in your house? Uh, no. No. <laughs> I'm like, well, Nancy the mom. You know. Okay, that's right. <laughs> well, I know, quickly about the cats. I know what you mean. I took in a stray cat last year. And I took her in because I said she was stray. Yeah. Well, the Tomcats got to her first. Uh, and seven kittens later, uh, luckily, luckily, I found homes for them all. They were all adopted out. But... Then she had a little trip to the vet, so now I'm just down to one cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my son went out one day. My youngest son, North, went out. He went out to fill his truck and came running back and said, Wilder, Wilder, my third son. And he said, come now. And so they ran out and came back. Somebody had dumped four 
itty bitty baby kittens, maybe a month old, in the middle of the road at night to either get run over or picked off. Oh uh, no! My youngest son is like his mother that you you never ever separate siblings. So I have four cats. Thankfully, they're all fixed because I don't need twenty. I was gonna say you better have had that trip to the vet. I mean, it sounded like you did. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, let's get kind of get on with your music. Uh, see, you got a guitar there. Uh, how long have you been playing guitar? What did you learn? Um, I started playing guitar about the age of eleven or twelve, and then uh, and I played for a lot of years, and then I got very interested in boys, and then I, you know it's the, the <laughs> typical, typical teenage thing, and then uh, I picked it up again, and then I had kids, and was just busy being a mom. Um, that I started playing again about I don't know fifteen years ago, and so there you have it. I've been playing. And singing ever since. So not only are you a musician, a singer, but you're also, you write your songs as well, I correct? Do. Yeah. Yeah. When I was 12, when I first started, I wrote one terrible song and two partially terrible songs. And that was that. And I thought, huh, I guess it dried up. And then I got really um, irritated. It's a long story. Um, about, sorry, I have hair in my face. Um, That's why I wear a hat. <laughs> yeah, I think I got it. Um, and... It really it spurred a song, and all of a sudden it opened the floodgates. Um, and it's really interesting some of the, the things that uh, inspire songs, things that you wouldn't expect. Sure, absolutely. Okay, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a bunch of Nancy's recorded music that I'm going to play for you tonight. But she's also going to be able to play maybe one, maybe two songs for you live. Uh, and we'll go and get started on that. So, Nancy, do you have a song picked out for us? Yeah, uh, this one's called Roll. Um, Roll. It's Roll. It's really interesting. Um, I've traveled back and forth across the country many times, and you see trucks and you know, all the time. And I keep thinking that if you were to mark the truck routes on an atlas in red, it would look like the lifeblood of the country. And that really stuck with me for a long time. So... Uh, then one day, and I, I never, I just nothing, and I had nothing for it. And one day I was folding laundry, and I heard strains on the radio a little bit. I really couldn't hear it well, but it triggered something in my brain. And I went, oh, my gosh. I dropped the laundry. I ran into my bedroom, picked up my guitar and a pen and a pad, and half an hour later, this song was written. This is called A Gift, you know? Okay. Because there are songs struggle over forever, and this is not one of them. But anyway, All right. Well, Nancy, ladies and gentlemen, this is Nancy Johnson with Roll. Take it away, Nancy. Thank you, darling. Was rolling down this morning in a big bed at home, and I find my thoughts keep drifting back to you. A thousand miles behind me, that million more to go. So, God, please help the same team will roll. It's been a month since I've seen you. Guess the kids are getting told. Gotta drop the slow and get another cross the line. I give anything to be there, but it's out of my control. So God, please help the safety with a roll. I want to go home to see you, roll you in my arms, rolling with the kids down on the floor. Got to throw those pennies. For a rainy day, and it's time for me to roll on out the door. Of this country that I love, and I'm proud to have the chance to do my part. But 
the cost is so much greater than the fuel and all the tolls. So God gives help, safety and with the road. I want to fly home to see you, rolling in my arms, rolling with the kids down on the floor. Then it's time for me to pull on out the door. And I can't wait to get back home to you. Now it's time for me to roll on out the door. Hey, very good. I enjoyed that, Nancy. Thank you. I'm laughing at myself thinking because, you know, the album is it's a full band, right? And uh -huh. Eric Clapton, who is unplugged, and then there's Nancy sure. Jones right now, who is stripped down. So, <laughs> hey, that was great. I enjoyed that, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That was a song called "Roll," R O L L. So, you said you have some interesting stories. So, uh, can you share the interesting story behind "Roll"? <laughs> uh, well, that, I did. I shared that one was just about the lifeblood of country and and just having that visual about just what it would look like. And you know what? We owe truckers. A huge debt of gratitude. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think they get the, the recognition they deserve because, really, without those goods, without the goods that they truck from one place to another, you'd be really hurting. Oh, America and Canada, well, all over the world, we would just shut down Absolutely. without our truckers. Absolutely. So, so uh, that's, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, you got something in the picture, I think. <laughs> I see uh, I something. Thought. Oh, your guitar! I thought I thought I saw I thought I saw yeah. a a pet down there or something. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe. Know, I have I have a part beagle, part Roddy. That's what I saw. That was funny. Nature's <laughs> beagle, and whenever whenever somebody uh, comes in, he comes to let me know he's all excited. So I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not a very quiet environment. On my, it's a lively environment. Let me put it that way. <laughs> we can hear the the uh, chocolate lab you know, <laughs> with a bell because. He's very sweet. He's the most generous kisser in the household, oh, boy. Is he D U M B? And he's yeah. not getting attention. <laughs> well, that's there. That's my beagle, Roddy. <laughs> yes. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. It's a little distracting. Oh no problem. I I, I have to keep my cat out because my cat will be right here in my face. <laughs> and she, during a live show, she's done it. So I have to keep her out. Now she just meows at the door. So oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you. Uh, Nancy also has a website, so uh, let me uh, bring that up really quick, and we'll go on to some other music in her books too. So, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you hearing this on audio only, it's www. Nancy Carey that C A R E Y Johnson dot com www dot nancy carry johnson dot com. So Nancy, just tell us if people click on your website here, what all information or what will they see there? Oh, they'll see all kinds of things. They will see the um, cover of Chaos and Grace, which is the name of the CD. Okay, uh, absolutely beautiful. And a nod to Texas. I actually recorded this in Texas. I live in Vermont. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, and um, Texas has been very good to me. I went I flew down to Austin to record with a friend of mine. Uh, Bill Command, great guy, uh, from Ovation Guitars, as a matter of fact, and um, uh, and in a nod to Texas, who has, which has been so good to me. I wanted, I had a cover shot of Blue Bonnets. Oh yeah, we're famous for those down here. <laughs> sure are, and it's a gorgeous cover, uh, and I'm really excited by it. Of great, I'm really excited. So, <laughs> well, I might be a little prejudiced, but uh, I like Texas the best. So. <laughs> I understand it. It's a great place. So yeah, we'll, we'll uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will put her website up uh, later on in the show. Uh, but uh, we, she's got so many, so many great songs here, and I'm going to play some of the recorded versions now. Okay. Um, is there a preference, Nancy? You'd like me to play? Any um, songs you'd like me to share? One of the things, uh, one of the songs I hear a lot about people love "Note from God," um, and I will. I should say this: this CD album is so eclectic. It is. A little folk, a little country, some blues, some uh, Texas swing, a couple of rock and roll songs, and oh. you know that it's it's really across the board. So, "No from God" is one of my uh, rockier, popular sort of songs, and it's it's a lot of fun. But I, there is a story behind that. Okay. Um, okay. I'll tell you so we'll, we we yeah. will 
we'll see if uh, Van Buren, Mr. Van Buren, can get this on the air. And so we will play a note from God. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Whoop, we got a little problem there. Let me try it again. Why did I know, you know, when you do a show live, you know, you're going to run into problems. Let's see. It's exactly right. If that's the worst uh, of it, everybody's blessed. Yep. Let's see if I can get it back. Okay. Hey, guys. Try it again. Yeah, don't you love live shows when things go wrong? You know? <laughs> yeah, I've been there, done that. Oh, here we go. Unless you got a note from God, I don't want to talk to you. Unless you got a note from God, I don't want to talk to you. You have a great voice, Nancy. That was really powerful. Now I got to tell you a funny story too. Yeah. Uh, when I first, you know, you told me to play that song, "Note from God." Yeah. In my mind, going, "Oh, how nice! A religious song." <laughs> and it's like, unless you got a note from God, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, as I'm the mother of four boys. I had four boys in five years. Um, my third son. And I had, went to the same hospital and had all the babies, and they all knew me. <laughs> My third son was born, and he was 11 pounds, one ounce at birth. 11 pounds? 11, one. He was a big boy. Wow. Yeah, I could tell you stories, but I won't. Um, and, uh, you know, 
it's the nurse's job to wake you at 10 o'clock at night and at 10 27 and at 10 34 and at uh, you know 10 46 and again at 11 01 and it just did this all night long and i was really whooped that was you know a long delivery and i've been <clears throat> not that wow so i thought oh no and i was an experienced mother and that's the rest of this so i put a note on my door and said unless you have a note from god do not wake me <laughs> i like that <laughs> i thought hi i wonder what, what that song is and and uh, it's just funny apparently a nurse who didn't know me turned saw the note on the door and turned to the other nurses and said well, what if i had two notes from god and they said, <laughs> you know, laughed at that she would like that that was funny so anyway you know hence hence the backstory of that one that is awesome man you did a great song and i love uh your vocals on that i mean it's really powerful so uh i really like that i mean it's just you know i like it i really i call it a powerful song so yeah. uh you've got a great voice nancy uh that is awesome now you said i mentioned a cd earlier is it what's the name of the cd it's called chaos and grace oh look wait a minute <laughs> the thing you can't see in front of my desk at the moment i don't know can you see this. I'm really bad at this. A little bit. Let me go and uh, show your website and yeah, we can right. see it a little bit better. Yeah. So, yeah, this is her website, uh, ladies and gentlemen. See, it. see if you can see it. Can y'all see that? There you go. Chaos and Grace. With a whole bunch of Texas blue bonnets. Now, see, I I'm partial to that now. <laughs> I blame you. It, I, Texas has been so good to me. I love Texas. I love Texans. Um, I spent some time in Dripping Springs. Oh my gosh, I am in love. Well, Wait we are happy that you liked our state, and please come back. You know, I will. I'm absolutely gonna. Now you mentioned that you're in Vermont, but do you also uh, you recorded some music? But do you play live? You go to different places to play? Yeah, yeah, I sure do. I play mostly in Vermont and New York State. Um, actually, like to you know. Hmm, it's not easy to have a full band here because it's a yeah. You know, places you play are restaurants and pubs, and the, you know, every once in a while, pubs are big enough so that you could have a full band, but not normally. Sure. Uh, so I'd really like to start touring with a band. That would be awesome. Oh yeah. wow! And well, on a on a on a very selfish note, if you're looking for a place to stay, see, you're about right here. Yeah. Can you come to about right there? Heck yeah! <laughs> it's called the Lone Star State. Hint Heck hint. Yeah. Hint, hint. <laughs> I'd love to. I really, I love Texas. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about your books here. I'd like to talk about your books, but I'd like to get on to another song. Is there another song you either want to play or you'd like me to play the recorded version? Um, why don't I, I'm going to tell you the story behind this one first because it's important. Okay. We love stories. <laughs> okay. So, because I am the mother of four boys and I had these four boys in five years and I homeschooled them, which meant I was oh, with them 24 seven. I mean, like, oh wow i had a babysitter once other than labor other than labor i had a babysitter one time mm. <laughs> he lives with my boys all the time oh, wow um, so i would get up early in the morning i'm an early bird by nature go figure a musician but anyway early bird by nature and i get up at four o'clock in the morning and i make myself a cup of tea and i just look just me uh and my very very favorite days of the year were the days after birthdays because I would get up, make a cup of tea, slice myself a piece of leftover birthday cake, <laughs> and, and eat it just by myself. And I didn't have kids wanting bites, and my husband didn't need my attention, and it was great. So I started thinking about that and thought, huh, what kind of crazy woman eats birthday cake for breakfast? And I tell you this because this is the kind of song, it's such a heartbreak song, I don't want you to slit your wrists. So when you're thinking about, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just remember the origin of the story, so you're like, oh, right, that's right. It's really, truly birthday cake for breakfast. Birthday cake for breakfast. Mm. Yeah, I've got a killer heartbreak song out of it, so here we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's Birthday Cake for Breakfast by Nancy Johnson. Mom and Daddy 
this dark last night they brought a birthday cake so we'll worry about you baby girl because we know your heart still aches don't you sit at home all alone they said you got so much to give but when you walked out of our door there went my reason to be No bacon, eggs, and biscuits the way I used to do. Every single morning before you said we're through, I just don't feel like cooking since you set me free. Guess it's birthday cake for breakfast for me. Asked me out at least a time or two. It's not that I don't like him, it's just that he's not you. So I sit at home all alone, pray you finally call. But as the silence fills the room, I know there is no hope at all. No bacon, eggs, and biscuits the way I used to do. Every single morning before you set me through, I just don't feel like cooking since you set me free. Guess it's birthday cake for breakfast for me. It's been more than a year now since you said goodbye. I'd give anything if you'd only change your mind. No bacon, eggs, and biscuits the way I used to do. Every single morning before you said with I just don't feel like cooking since you set me free. Guess it's birthday cake for breakfast for me. Awesome, Nancy. Thank oh, you. So much. Hey, just one second. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had something in my eye. <laughs> Sorry. Remember, towards the end of the story, I say you don't want to slit your wrist. Yeah, that's like, yeah. Oh. That was good. Oh, but yeah, sad, but good, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so and now at least we know the, the kind of the humorous story behind it. So. Oh, absolutely. You know, I think that there's just like, some people have harebrained things happen to them, and I would be one of those people, you know, and it just for whatever reason. And thankfully, I have the good fortune to say, well, what would that be? And, uh, and you know, that's what it was. Well, I can honestly say that I have never had just birthday cake for breakfast. Uh, so uh, uh, it's, it's a, it's a uh, interesting point, I think. <laughs> you know, if you eat your dessert first, you always have room for it. So I'll pose a question to my audience, those watching this live and those that are watching this much later. Honestly, have you ever eaten birthday cake for breakfast? Please be honest. We want to know. <laughs> There's got to be a story behind it, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nancy, we've got more of your music that we're going to play. Uh, I like to kind of switch gears here a little bit, though. Not only is uh, are you a musician, like I said at the top of the show, you are also an author. Yes, sir. And you've written some very, very interesting books. I'd like to share uh, those with my audience. Um, so uh, I'll ask, which one did you become first? Were you, do you think you were a writer first or were you a musician first? So, you know, I, I, do you, are you a parent? Do you have kids? Uh, no, I do not. No. Okay. Well, uh, you know, and you, but you were a kid. So I remember for as long, far back as I can remember, all I've ever wanted to do was sing 
and uh, sing professionally and eventually write songs. And I say as far back as I can remember, I hated when my father changed my diapers because he squeezed my ankles so hard at home. And about 20 years ago, he said, oh yeah, you bet I did. I said something to him about that. He said, you used to kick. So I had to hold your ankle so you didn't kick me while I was changing diapers. Um, and little kids, any parent out there will know that if you have a, a baby, you'll carry them sometimes on their side, on your side, because it's the fastest, mm-hmm. easiest, most efficient way to do it. But I hated that because it hurt me. And I remember that. And I remember. Oh. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I know. Like, what, you know, back to crazy lady, I think. So I remember I couldn't wait to be weighed on the big hit scale at the doctor's office. And the very first time I was, it was so exciting. So when I say as far back as I can remember, I'm not kidding you. All I ever wanted to do was sing. I'm actually an accidental author. I never intended to be a writer. It never even occurred to me to be a writer. <laughs> uh, oh, no, it's the truth. And then a friend of mine was on Facebook, and she said, will you stop with the political, angry political post <laughs> that regurgitated me? And she said, I got on Facebook to find out what my friends were doing, find out how they were, what their day was like, what were they thinking. Exactly. So I started writing stories, and from there, I gained readers who said, oh, you need to write a book. And I said, I am not a writer. I don't think so. It took, <laughs> years. It took several years. And finally, some a fellow said, no, really, you should. I love your work. And if you do, I'll help you get it out there. Wow. Oh, OK. So I rolled up my sleeves, got life as good as written, and then he crapped out on me. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, never. no. So I uh, talked, spoke with a friend of mine who used to be um, an editor in, in the in the literary field, and he said, "I'm not there anymore," and that changes hands for me just pretty rapidly. He said, "But you call Stephanie Gunning. Stephanie is my editor, and she was somebody that he and I grew up with. John was literally the boy next door." And he said, "Call Stephanie and talk to her. She's an editor, and see what she says." Well, I did, and uh, and we did, and Life Is Good was born, and it was my first book, and won a couple of awards, and a runner-up, and and um and there you have it life is good yeah uh, there it is ladies and gentlemen if i can point to the right direction yes uh-huh yeah i, I have the trouble i'm really yeah not stuff. and it says for those it's for those of you watching this on audio it's a book that she wrote it's called life is good wit and wisdom from a vermont homesteader boy that grabs your attention right there i believe <laughs> So is this all, I want to ask you, is this like a one big story? Is this a collection of no, short stories? No, it's a collection of short stories. You, okay. I'm thinking you're too young to remember Irma Bombeck, but your mother would know Irma. I've heard the name. Irma that Bombeck was a funny lady. She was a writer who wrote <laughs> funny stories about life and family and kids. Well, I would say that I'm akin to Irma Bombeck meets Chicken Soup for the Soul. Some of the Oh, okay. <laughs> laugh and, and cry and, and go, yes, I know what that feels like and empowered. And as I said, you know. Um, so one of the, may I tell you one of the harebrained stories? Please, oh, yes. All right. It really is. This this is a true story. Every story in there, I will tell you, is a thousand percent true. So my mother died. My mother was the oh. love of my father's life. This is forty years ago, and love of his life. And he couldn't bear to get her from the funeral home. He couldn't bear to get her ashes. Mm-hmm. That's six years later. My upstairs neighbor, his his upstairs neighbor, said. Nancy, I think we need to go retrieve your mother. So we went and got her ashes and brought her home and I put her in a safe place. Big mistake. Mm-hmm. When I put her in a safe place, they're like, really safe, forever. You'll never find it again. I'm, that's the kind of safe it is. So interestingly, or ironically, two months later, my father finally decided after six years, it was really time to get my mother. So he went to the funeral home, because certainly I wasn't going to tell him that. and. Uh, found out that way. I figured I was safe for a long time. Of course not. Of course not. He called me and said, well, I was at the funeral home to find out that you picked your mother up. I'd really like to have her ashes. And I said, sure, Dad, I'll, no problem. I'll get them to you. Mm-hmm. I couldn't remember where I put them. I had no idea. Oh, I looked, no. I looked in his apartment high and low, nothing. I looked in my apartment high and low, nothing. I looked in Barbara's apartment. I grew up in Brooklyn. Um, high and low, nothing. I looked in the basement. I looked. I couldn't find it. And so every few weeks he say, Nancy, I'd really like to have your mother. I'd really, and I said, Dad, I'm so busy. I'm really sorry. Now I'm panicked. Like, what do you say? Mm. I've lost my mother. Mm. So, what do you do in Brooklyn when you can't find the ashes? Well, you have a barbecue. So I, had, <laughs> I had a hibachi 
grill and I had a barbecue on my fire escape and I cooked everything and thought, good, I'll have the ashes. Well, I'm here to tell you that barbecue ashes smell like barbecue ashes till hell freezes over. Oh. And I'm like, oh no, no. <laughs> so I started adding baking soda and they, and I added it and looking at this going, oh, oh, is this what ashes look like? I have no idea. I hadn't, <laughs> hadn't opened it, so I didn't know. So finally, and in panic, I just put a whole bunch of baking soda in, mixed it all up and stuck it out on my fire escape to let it really air out. And actually that worked in case, in case you ever need to do this, that actually works. Okay. Um, so and wow. <laughs> ashes came in what looked like an unmarked paint can, just like a, mm -hmm. a gallon paint can. Sure. So I, I, I went and bought a plain paint can. I did the label. And at the time in New York City, you could not get a second, a duplicate death certificate. I don't know why. I, hmm. You can in Vermont now, anyway. That's so, odd. Yeah. yeah, but you couldn't do it. I mean, that was it. Somehow, and this was so long ago, I genuinely don't remember. I got one. I, I think I told them what I'd done, told them about the whole thing, and they must have said, Shh, don't tell anybody, but. They're they, probably thinking, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, everything is good. I go present my father with my mother. He's happy. Life is good. Two months later, the phone rings. And dad says, so Nance, what was it you gave me? I just found your mother in the closet. Oh. <laughs> I've actually seen that can in the closet. I thought it was a paint can. Oh, my gosh. And after all that, oh, yeah, my oh God. My. Yeah. What? Man, what a story. <laughs> it is true. As I said, I don't think. I don't think harebrained things like that happen to absolutely everybody. I think there's just a few of us that it's like. I don't know. I've got some stories myself that would yeah. just be like people be scratching their heads. Bob, what were you thinking? You know. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. But you've actually written another uh, book too yeah. uh, about Christmas memories. So as well. tell us about this one. I will, what I'll say is once you write a book, oh, actually you have a book written, that's when the real work begins. Mm -hmm. Editing and, and a million other things you have to go back over and through. And then it's also getting it out there. And the ISBN numbers, I'd say is been, but I've been yelled at by too many <laughs> um, um, so There's so much work to it. And as I'm in the middle of it, at that time I was, we were growing, I was working full time, growing 10 acres of hemp. I was a working musician and had just finished writing books. So I had a lot on my plate and I was a mother and a wife and you know um so about a week before life is good was released and I'm up to my eyeballs and getting all that stuff done Stephanie my editor calls and said so I think you should start your next book and have it be about Christmas and she and I'm like ah no pressure yeah <laughs> no pressure, right. have it done in a couple of months well I, I just didn't have the time it took a couple of years um mm -hmm. 18 months but I got it done and um, this is not just Christmas. It's it is fall, Christmas, Thanksgiving, winter, dogs, New Year's. Um, <laughs> got forty of my favorite recipes because um, I'm a caterer. Oh, cool! I'm a caterer among other things. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Wow, you got a lot on your plate. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I really do. Um, and, you know, I fed all these big, large boys, and you know, had to feed them something. But anyway. So I put it together and it's the same format. It's got a lot of, it's got a bunch of stories. Um, this one's, Life is Good, 125 pages. I think this one's like 352. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and it's, 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 a, it's a good one. There's a lot of really great, poignant stories. There are, good. There are some harebrained ones. Oh, hey. uh, we like harebrained stories. <laughs> uh, and it's just you know it's a, it's a fun wholesome book so I'm really I really I'm happy with that I have to say that's great so it's called Christmas Memories Thanks. Wit Wisdom and Holiday Recipes oh that looks very very good thank you okay well, let's go on to uh, your music now too uh, is there any particular other song you'd like me to play for our audience uh, yeah um, mm -hmm. decisions decisions I play Heaven and Hell because that's a that's another one that's really better with a band versus the stripped down version. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we will uh, play Heaven and Hell uh, by our own Nancy Johnson right there. So let's see if Bob can do this correctly. <laughs> Bob can do this. <laughs> Mm 
You love me once, you love me twice. You love me hard, and you love me nice. Your soft caress makes me lose control. Your passionate kiss sees me to my soul. Don't seem to matter which way I turn, cause I've got. Possesses me And your wild abandons What sets me free oh, Heaven and hell Heaven and hell It's what you put me through Heaven and hell oh, Heaven and hell Every day that I'm with you You're playing to play A voice, man, you have really got very good, Nancy. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Now, that's okay. You said you got a story, so is there a story on this song, Heaven and Hell? That one, yeah, that was sort of that was not funny like the other ones, but um, okay, was, that's fine. I was two different people called me um, and asked me to write and submit songs to uh, those lonely boys. And um, and I knew this was not what they had the kind of thing they'd done, but I wasn't really sure. I'm like, wow. Uh huh. So I was on my back porch, on my kitchen porch, um, canning corn relish of all things. I had my guitar out there. It was a beautiful mm -hmm. day, and I, all of a sudden, picked it. I was like, what is that? And I started playing it. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, as it turns out, you know, as I said, it's very different from what they've done. But you never know if somebody wants to continue in the same kind of vein absolutely change direction so they don't end up sort of sounding the same everything they do is kind of mm -hmm. the same 
So I thought, well, you know, I had no idea. I had just because I had two different people ask me if I would write and submit songs to them, did not mean that it was going to be anything um, that they were. I just I had no insight, I guess, of where I was going with that. So I wrote them. I submitted it. They said, "Thank you very much. We're not accepting outside material," and that was that. Mm. Didn't break my heart entirely because then I got to use it. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Hey, got a, a great compliment for you from the uh, live audience. I'll share that with it now. Sandra Piper says, awesome song and wonderful voice. A pleasure to listen to. Sandra, thank you so much. That is very kind of you. I really appreciate that. So, And I want to reiterate to the audience that uh, if you like uh, Nancy's music, uh, she does have a CD out, and you can see it right here at her website, www.nancycarryjohnson.com. And the name of the CD is Chaos and Grace. So tell us about the uh, title of this CD. Uh, well, <laughs> also, once a CD, an album is recorded, that's also when the real work begins. I mean, there's okay. a lot of stuff, but you, you start, well, there's a lot of ways to do it. You can do a whole thing live, but a lot of times you just layer stuff. And we did the layering approach because that's sure that much time and um afterwards there was a lot of work to be done uh and we were the time had come to work on the on the um cover and i you know my thought was i'd like to call it blessed because I, I was feeling so very blessed and so grateful mm -hmm. um to dream come true we're blessed and everyone's saying yeah we get that but it's kind of boring <laughs> well, there's a compliment in there somewhere, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I get that, you know, but but that's really, I, I felt so strongly that I had, had been so blessed and so very grateful for this opportunity. But as we worked through it, um, Jeff Hasselberger, who is uh, the guy who did the CD and is one of the producers and played music on it, okay. uh, said, you know, it struck him that all these songs were about relationships in varying stages of grace and chaos sure and we had all these other ideas and i thought wait a minute wait a minute there we go let's call it chaos and grace and so that's what we did well talk about an appropriate title yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow so d you wrote all these songs on the cd yeah, and the other people oh wow say i am not a songwriter at all but i i admire people even envy people that can uh just because you can take you know you're one of those you can take some like a life story yeah and make it into a song yeah i didn't know i could that was one of those gifts that i that was a latent gift uh and all of a sudden i could and i i had I, I couldn't tell you why I, you know there's no rhyme for me there's no rhyme no reason for other people there might be Wow, that's great. That takes talent. I mean, you wear many hats. You're a songwriter, you're a singer, and an author, in addition to being a mother of four. And then, uh, what, four cats, you said, too? Three dogs, four cats, chickens. I'm a caterer. Um, yeah, I just like, but that's it. You know, here's the thing. I do all those things fairly well, and that's the truth. I have mm -hmm. no false modesty, but nor do I have false illusions. Not at all. I cannot sew. I cannot draw. I cannot do astrophysics. I probably could do astrophysics before I could draw or so, you know. <laughs> Everybody has their gifts, and those are mine. <laughs> and, wow. and the rest of the world I just can't do so. So uh, I was going to ask you, what about your free time? Or you probably don't have any free time, do you? Uh, no, I have no downtime. None, <laughs> None at all. Oh, unless you're sleeping. Maybe, maybe I bet you work in your sleep even, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> no, I sleep, usually sleep pretty hard. But I'm not one. I don't watch TV. I, you know, I just can't. I've always got other things that interest me. Um, and if I sit down in front of a TV or in front of a movie, I'm asleep in about 27 seconds. So. Wow. Wow, that is something. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you, give me, say if you can give some, maybe some advice. Uh, there might be somebody watching this show live, or maybe they're watching it, you know, days, weeks, months, yeah. years later. Maybe they have written a song, you know, a, a song, and maybe it's just sitting there on their desk collecting dust, but they don't know what to do with it, where to go with it, how do I get it published, how do I play it myself, and how do I get it out there? What would you suggest to him or her? I think there's a few things to do. I think that you can, if you have only got lyrics, you want to find somebody else that that can write or at least you know play music and maybe the okay. two of you one he or she can come up with something or 
the two of you can do it. Um, if you actually have a full song and you don't know what to do with it, there are a lot of places that you can, like songwriting contests. And there are some that if you, if you submit songs, eventually you'll get um, um, feedback. They'll give you some written feedback and that can be helpful. If you play at all, or even if you play at all, you can go to open mics. Any, every town has an open mic and start sure. playing it. Um, if you're not a singer and you would like to ask other people, ask them if they could sing it and play it uh, and get people's opinions. You can ask them. Here's the thing, you know, everyone has an opinion whether or not you agree is the, is the question. But if you, it, it, one of the things you're not allowed to say to me is the song sucks. And it's not that. Yeah, you, that's true. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay to say that, but you can't, you have to tell me why. I, I want it to be constructive. It's, yeah. you know, telling me it sucks doesn't help. It's like, it gives me no direction, no Like feedback. a drive-by, okay. Well, yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you want to ask for constructive feedback from people that you might trust, ask a music teacher, ask, you know, somebody at school. Ask a kid who's a wonderful musician. That was the cat. <laughs> love it. I love it. <laughs> My life is a zoo, and it is very, very real. <laughs> um Mm. So those are possibilities anyway okay well we have time actually for one more song so uh nancy is there any particular song you'd like me to play for the audience here uh why don't you play um it was the first blues song i ever wrote okay it's called um baby you ain't no good oh uh, baby and- you ain't no good that's yeah. i'm sure there's a story behind that as well yeah, exactly it just came to me one day this is one of those that was a gift. One of those, I don't know. I was never a blues player, and out this song came. All right. So let's get uh, this uh, for everybody, ladies and gentlemen. This is, once again, Nancy Johnson with Baby You Ain't No Good. Boy, that has tantalizing right there. <laughs> <laughs>
very, very good. I loved it. Thank you. Sure thing. It's my pleasure. I'm and uh, Baby You Ain't No Good. I think that title's self-explanatory, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I really, I have no idea where it came from. One day, I just started doing this. It just came to you, huh? Yeah. But it was another one of those gifts. I, I will tell you, very. every time you say this, it kind of cracks me up a little. They go by Nancy Carey Johnson because when I was living in the Hudson Valley, I was like five minutes outside of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And when I played in Connecticut, half the room loved me and voted for me. The other half of the room hated me, would never vote for me. <laughs> that way, there was some senator named Nancy Johnson. I'm like, oh. oh, was that it? Oh, wow. So that's why I was wondering. I didn't. I didn't question. I thought there's got to be a reason she's doing the three names. Well, but, that's, uh, and that's the reason why. Because if I didn't, um, I everywhere I went, it was either they loved me or they hated me. Like it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> and we got some more great comments from the audience. Uh, Nancy, uh, Michael Haywood says, "Great voice, Nancy." Thank you, dear. And then uh, let's see. Scott has says, "Nancy has so much talent." Thank you so much. So we can't draw do astrophysics though. So right, <laughs> I think we'll excuse that. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say it one more time. If you liked her music, uh, the songs she's played, and the books that we talked about, here once again is her website: www.nancycarryjohnson.com. Is there a way, Nancy, they can actually contact you on this through, website uh, too? The website, absolutely, they can contact me through the website. Um, also. I'm on most of the major streaming platforms, so if you don't want a CD, you can go to Spotify or Reverb Nation or Bandcamp um, and all of you know iTunes and whatever, all of them. Everything in between, too. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It's a, it's a new world, and God knows I am not young, so it's a little baffling to me, but you know, little by little, step by step. Got one more comment. Uh, Michael says, your vocal, vocals remind me of Mary Chapin Carpenter. Oh, thank you. Wow, that's a compliment. <laughs> well, Nancy, I appreciate you being on the show. It's been really, really great. Um, good luck on your books and your music. And uh, like again, selfishly, if you ever decide to come a thousand miles uh, southwest from where you are, let us know here I in sure Texas. <laughs> you bet I will, absolutely. It's been great. Thank you not only for sharing your music, for playing a couple of songs live, too. And uh liked uh, seeing your pets in the background. <laughs> that was kind of fun. <laughs> well, Bob, thank you so much for having me. It's very kind and gracious of you. I had a wonderful time. You're very, you're very good at this, and I appreciate that. Thanks so much, Nancy. You have a great night. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Good night. And ladies and gentlemen, that's all going to do it for tonight's episode of Van Buren Variety. Make sure you haven't subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, hit it subscribe. And if you liked Mary's music tonight, you got to hit that like button and leave some comments too. I'm sure she would appreciate that as well. So that's all for me tonight. Just as a reminder, I am live every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Central Time, which is 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And next week, I'll have another uh, guest with another topic so you never know what it's going to be so make sure you hit that subscribe button so until next week ladies and gentlemen i hope you have a great night this is bob van buren good night